Hey guys, good afternoon and welcome to Your Stocks. I'm Pavitra Parekh. We've had a lot of queries that have come in and we're going to get to all of those in just a minute. But first up, a look at the market, which is currently 240 points in the red. We're at the low point of the day. 19.895 is where we're at. We've all been talking about this. The majority of the selling pressure today coming through on the nifty because of what's going on with HDFC Bank as well as Reliance Industries. So both of those heavyweights really weighing on the index. And you know, it is not just HDFC Bank. Of course, that is seeing the biggest cut. But if you look at the nifty, banking pack it has continued to fall after the open so right now it's down around 650 points one and a half percent gone over there and it is a lot of the banks which have come under pressure so whether you look at a kotak icici bank uh, indesin all of these have slipped to the low point of the day the mid cap index also which you know up until an hour ago was just around 30 40 points in the red that has slipped around 150 points from that level as well so that is currently down around 180 points that's what's going on with the markets we'll talk more about this but first up let me invite our guests on the show we have rajat bose joining us to talk all about the technicals and how the charts are looking and we have parthiv shah director tracom stock brokers to take us through the fundamental side of things rajat parthiv as always it's a pleasure to have you on the show so thank you so much for joining us uh, you know, before we get into the queries, Raja, just a word on, you know, the kind of fall that we have seen. We're at the low point of the day right now, 235 points. Do you see more pressure coming in specifically on account of what's going on with the banking pack? You see, although the banking pack has fallen quite a bit today by hmm. 650 plus points, but I'm not so worried about the bank nifty. I'm rather worried about the mid cap index, which has actually fallen the least. But yeah. first, to answer your query on banking, banking, what I feel is that only if you find that the CNX banking, uh, bank nifty, uh, if it uh, uh, goes down to something like 44, nine for, uh, 950, there is the 20-day exponential moving average, which can give us a good support to it. And I expect a bounce back because there is a, a medium-term moving average bullish crossovers <laughs> were happening uh, uh, by the end of Monday. So it would give that effect, uh, though it, the, such effects come a bit belatedly. Regarding the Nifty, I would say that till such time you see the Nifty falling below 19,640. Uh, this is a course correction, but once 19,640 gets broken, that is the 20 day moving average again, uh, then there would be problem. But one thing I would like to, through your channel, I would like to caution the small cap and mid cap bulls that mm. they need to book profits because there would be serious problem going forward because uh, <coughs> this nifty mid cap index has a habit of falling 50% uh, uh, on the maximum side and 25% for a minimum after such humongous bull run. Mm. All right. We actually saw one of these days play out last week as well, right? Where we saw an over 1,000-point kind of cut in the mid-cap index and there was a bit of a shakeout over there. Today as well, by the way, the small-cap index is still down around 1.2% and it has been uh, pretty much at that level for much of the trading day. But with that, let's move on and get to our queries. We have Akash Kumar who's written in from Noida. He says he has 30 shares of SBI, which he bought at 200. So he's definitely made good money on this one. SBI currently at around 600. He says he's a short-term investor. I'm going to read that as maybe he doesn't want to hold on too much from these levels because if he bought at 200, he's been holding this one for a bit. And he wants to know the future prospects of his investments. Uh, Parthiv, let me come to you first on SBI. Good money has been made we've been talking about this PSU pack rally uh, do you think now is definitely you know the time to stay invested in this space good afternoon Parikra, Rajata and our viewers see I think particularly because this investor is having a very short uh, term in terms of uh, the time horizon and he's sitting on uh, extremely good gains he has almost tripled his money here so no harm booking profits but overall in terms of the long term view for SBI we are very upbeat on this particular company uh, the reason being that now even the public sector banks are firing on all cylinders uh, SBI in particular has done a lot of clean up and more importantly I think it has one of the finest balance sheets uh, in the entire banking pack I would say and uh, they have capability to disburse uh, loans and grow at the rate of around 10 to 12 percent which is what the management is guided for and uh, going over to 2025, 26, I think onwards, we are going to see good improvement in terms of the ROAs, ROEs, and even the credit costs are going to come lower. So overall, I think the bank is on a good trajectory, yet it is quoted at a little discount to a lot of its larger peer caps. And our sense is that SBA is a good hold here, but uh, if the gentleman wants to book out some profits, no harm here. 
Okay, considering that he's already made such uh, a good amount of money on this one. But Parthiv, uh, you know, take us through on SBI. Would you would you recommend that just from a longer term perspective, this is one to definitely hold and, you know, this is not something that you should let go of. Also, within the PSU banking space, are there other names that seem attractive to you? Because a lot of them, at least through, you know, through last week, we're seeing 15, 20% in terms of a jump. Yes, absolutely, Bhartha. There was a huge disconnect in terms of the valuation gap between the public sector banks as vis a vis the private sector banks. And if I were to include even the regional private sector banks. And more importantly, we are at a stage or we are at a cycle where all of these PSU banks have done a massive cleanup. They've written off all of the bad loans. They've done a fantastic uh, recoveries of a lot of past loan, legacy loan issues. And now the credit cost has started to come down. The uh, NPL, NPL levels have started to come in the normal range. And these banks are now capable people to start dispersing again and it seems that uh, probably after the lessons of the past the PSU bank uh, uh, managers are talking about you know ensuring very high quality underwriting standards which is slowly bringing back the conviction in the market in terms of that even these banks can disperse loans quality loans and not have fatal accidents like what you've seen in the past and that's why we are seeing this huge valuation gap between the PSUs and the private sector banks narrowing down and a lot of these PSU banks have already re-rated but in case of SBI looking at its balance sheet size and the capability that the bank has and in terms of the branch networks that it has I think it will definitely be a big beneficiary of this current banking boom that you are witnessing. And if the GDP were to grow at around 6-7%, I have no doubts that the credit disbursement would happen at the rate of 12-15%. to 15%, In which case, I think SBI will ensure that at least its current market share is not lost, rather it try and steal more market share from the weaker players. Okay, got that. Uh, that is on SBI as well as this entire PSU banking space. Rajat, what is your call on this one? He's saying only a short-term investor from here on. He doesn't want to perhaps hold for too long. What do you think is the right thing to do? Would you book this, you know, profit that he's seen? Because he's made a good amount of money on this. Or would you say, uh, you know, from a three, four month perspective, it still makes sense to hold? Okay, regarding SBI, what I would say that uh, he should be, uh, he should continue to hold on for the time being because unless his cl closes below 575, it doesn't become that weak. In fact, uh, there is a golden crossover that is happening between, say, 20 day and a 50 day exponential moving average. The import of that, that initially it will fall and then there would be a good bounce back, which uh, the recent high, as I say, uh, as I can see the uh, recent high that happened uh, last day, uh, that was 608, that would be crossed and it might test even 620. So from 580 to 620, 40 point gain. Then I would be in Parthiv's camp. I would also suggest booking profits there because most of these banks and PSU counters have gone berserk in the uh, recent months. One should take some profits away from the table. All right. I think berserk is the only way to describe what has been going on with some of these names. But uh, very helpful advice there on both the technical side as well as the fundamentals. But with that, let's move on to our next query. We have Naveen Rao who writes in from Telangana. He says he has 2,000 shares of Jain Irrigation, which he bought at 60. The stock is right now just around 62 rupees as well. So a little bit of money made over here. He wants to know whether he should hold or sell at current levels. Rajat, how is this one looking on the charts? Uh, I would say that this is, I, I, if I were in his shoes, I would book profits because it has first posted at top around 60, uh, around 70. And after that, it again posted a second top, which is just below, I think, uh, uh, 68.90. And then it is coming down. Once it falls below 56, there would be uh, movement towards retesting the 200-day moving average, which is close to 44. In fact, uh, through your channel, I would tell people that not just the mid-cap and small-cap, book some profits because the Nifty has reached a very critical resistance zone between 2250 and 2390. One is a Fibonacci, 2.618 Fibonacci, on the daily chart and the weekly Fibonacci of 2390, that is on the weekly chart based on the fall between say 12,500 to about 7510, which was the COVID fall from February 11, 2020 to about 23rd March uh, 2020. And now the Fibonacci is reaching, uh, I mean, the uh, Nifty is reaching on the close to the 2.618 Fibonacci. 
booking profits is definitely in order. Hmm. Okay, I got that. Uh, let me also get to Parthiv on this one. Parthiv, of course, this is a stock which has had a very good run, but the buy price is, you know, pretty high as well on this. Do you think there is more upside left in gen irrigation right now, or would you suggest, uh, like Rajat pointed out, maybe get out of this one? See, Babita, this has been more like a turnaround story. I recollect back in 2019, uh, sometime in July, I think this company had undergone a massive debt restructuring because they had a lot of legacy issues with debt and uh, servicing the same. And post which, I think we've seen a slow gradual turnaround. And now probably the company is looking reasonably good in terms of uh, how their reserves are placed and how it's doing. But I fully agree with Rajita's view that uh, this probably is something which is already factored in. And uh, probably the outlook going ahead, especially with the global sentiment, uh, doesn't seem very good. So I think no harm exiting here, wait on the sideline, and a lot of other quality plays in this segment, especially likes of Supreme Industry or Estral, where I think on any dips one can look into those stories, uh, Visor is joint irrigation, where the past track record in terms of management's ability of capital allocation was always a question mark. Okay, got that. Right now, today the stock is up around 3% and it has had a solid rally. Um, you know, if you look at just the past six months or so, I think it's up around 80% over there. But with that, it is time for a short break. There are lots more queries that have come in, so we're going to get to all of that in just a bit. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're still tuned into your stocks and we still have Rajat and Parthi with us to help answer all of the queries that have come in. So let me get to the next one. We have Pankaj Gaglani who writes in and he's on the line actually with us from Mumbai and he has a query with uh, investments in Aditya Birla Capital. Mr. Gaglani, please go ahead, ask us your query because both of our guests are on the line as well and they'll be able to help you out. Mm -hmm. Ma'am, I own 400 shares of AB Capital that were bought okay. three years back. Should mm -hmm. I exit or hold? Should I exit or hold now? Okay, what price did you buy this at? At 180. Okay, you bought at 180. The stock is exactly at uh, 180 right now as well. And uh, can I ask yes. how long you're willing to hold this investment as well? No, I can hold, no problem. But uh, because it is not moving further, uh, it is not yeah. uh, having any substantial movement. So I wanted to know whether I should uh, exit from it and ask for something else, or go for something else. Okay, I can understand your concern. You've been holding for about a year and the stock has really not done anything in that time period. Uh, Parthiv, let me come to you on this. What would you advise? He's saying he's willing to hold on. Time is not an issue. Uh, so he's willing to stay put. But do you think it makes sense to stay put in this one? See, uh, frankly speaking, Pavitra, we have a lot of options in the NBFC space. And more importantly, mm. if you see the track record of AB Capital, it has uh, failed to deliver any shareholder value. I recollect when this company was spun off from uh, the original parent, uh, it was quoting at somewhere around 250 levels, post which, you know, during the crisis and uh, LFS crisis, etc., it had gone to as low as uh, 90 bucks. From that, it has recovered to around levels of 180. So, frankly speaking, it has done nothing ever since it spun off. And and uh, probably, you know, there, there was some issue in terms of, you know, how the NBFC book was built, which is now getting probably cleaned up. And also, we have seen that uh, it's another subsidiary, which is uh, the Aditya Birla Asset Management Company. It also got listed and it's still quoting below, well below the IPO price. So, I think I'm a little wary of uh, suggesting to hold on to this particular counter. Mm -hmm. If he's looking for something on a longer term horizon where there can be very good scale for at least three to four years, we are more upbeat on geo financial services, especially knowing the fact that it is backed by Mr. K.V. Kamath and the team is extraordinary and they've already done a lot of uh, partnerships with BlackRock and also they are looking into a lot of different segments and trying to disrupt the industry. So that would rather be counterproductive for players like AB Capital but I think Geo Financial Services has the ecosystem to deliver. That is why we would feel that that stock can outperform the NBSV space as compared to AB Capital. 
Okay, got that. So that could be, you know, an alternative to this investment. Rajat, uh, what is your view? Would you agree here that Aditya Birla is uh, maybe not the best stock to be invested in because he's been holding for a year. It's not given him anything at all. And he is willing to switch as well to a different, uh, to a different stock. I would comment on Aditya Birla. I'm not going to compare because probably I would be violating some regulations for SEBI because it says that you can come up with a research report, but you can't make comparisons, then you are stepping into the role of an investment advisor. So okay. Aditya Birla uh, Capital, now it looks like it is distributing. It was, uh, this distribution is happening between July high close to 200. And after that, there had been one downswing, then another, then there was a corrective upswing close to that uh, low of, two, uh, close to that high of 200. And now it is, liquidating i mean people are actually selling off and the moving averages are giving bearish crossovers so if the recent low the recent low is broken uh, then probably there will be a fall uh, this low is around say 177 if 177 is taken out the first target would be the 200 day exponential moving average which is roughly around say 165 uh, once this level is reached, then take a decision that whether you would fully exit or not, but definitely exit 50% because this stock has been distributing. Once it starts falling, it doesn't stop at the 200-day moving average. It will breach that. Hmm. All right, Mr. Gaglani, I hope that helps you. That is the advice on AB Capital from both of our uh, you know, guests on the show today. But with that, I'm going to try and squeeze in one final query. We have Koman who writes in from Pune. She has 25 shares of Coal India, which she bought at 110. She is making some profits on this one. It is at 285 right now. So actually quite a significant gain there. She says she's a medium-term investor and wants to, stay, uh, wants to know whether she should stay invested or a sell. We were just talking about a stock which has not done much. Coal India has done a lot in the past just one month. It's up around 25, 26 uh, percent. Rajat, uh, is the uptrend intact? Are we expecting to see more gains on this one? I mean, the entire the entire PSU basket has done very well. But what would you recommend on just Coal India? Well, regarding Coal India, what I would say is that Coal India you would do better to book profits. Although even in today's session, it is actually moving up. But book part profits, if it moves up further, if it moves further up, also book uh, profits on the way up. Because this kind of a vertical run is <laughs> unlikely to sustain. I'm not saying that Coal India or other PSU stocks have already reached their top. But that can happen at any point in time, and then you will see a very substantial correction. So at least book part profits, uh, release your capital or you enjoy the uh, appreciation, but whatever capital you have spent, take that out of the table. That would that way you would be much safer. And these kind of rallies end up in a similar fashion. They start falling uh, vertically. Okay, so maybe book some profits in Coal India. Parthi, what would you recommend? Do you think this is also one where you know the stock has run up so much that maybe you should book part profits here, or do you think do you think there's lots more to go? One of the reasons where I'm tempted to suggest a hold here is because not only uh, the investment price is at rock bottom levels, but at that price, the dividend yield that is set for the investor is extremely high. It's probably uh, in double digits. So I think uh, it's not a bad idea to hold on to the stock. The reason being that currently, if you look at uh, the e auction prices for a company like Coal India, they're reasonably good. Uh, they're looking at upping the volume game because uh, we see the demand from the end users, especially the power sector, and even in the non-power sector, I think there is extremely good demand. They have good long-term linkages with a lot of companies. So probably, especially at a point in time where the PACs have started to re-rate, uh, probably Coal India currently at this price, even after this rally, is sitting at the same price what it used to quote uh, during the IPO times. So I think there is a possibility that it can run up further, but more importantly, the levels at which the investors invested uh, gives a very good dividend yield. So I would suggest a hold in Coal India. Okay, Coal India and uh, Parthiv, they're suggesting a hold. The stock, like we were pointing out, is up around 25% uh, in just the past one month. But with that, we're going to wind down on this edition of Your Stocks. Parthiv, Raja, thank you very much for joining us and taking us through all of these queries which have come in. 
Uh, we're going to wind down with the markets not looking any better than when we started. 230 points gone on the Nifty. The Nifty Bank still down over 600 points. Thanks for tuning in. We have closing bell after this short break for the final hour of trade today.